everyone, welcome to our channel. Today we're gonna learn about the flower. In this video we're gonna cover several topics as you can see in this outline, especially main parts of a simple flower, and their functions and arrangements, different morphologies of flowers, floral types, and their arrangements mainly. Especially, you can come to know about different terminologies. As flowers are the main part of flowering part identification, as a botanist, you need to have a basic idea about a flower. In this figure, you can see main parts of a simple flower, including receptacle, sepals, petals, carpal that includes ovary, style and stigma, and the stamen that contain filaments and anthers. A bract is one form of leaf modifications, or reduced leaves associated with a flower at the base near peduncle or pedicle. Flowers with bracts called bractea, and without called ebractea. These provides protection to florets at bud stage, and helps attracting pollinators. Floral corona are also called paraperigonium, paraparigon, or paracorolla. This is a ray or a ring or a set of floral appendages between sepals and petals, or arising from corolla or the outer edge of stamens with vivid colors to attract pollinators, or act as a nectar guide. It is often positioned where the corolla lobes arise from the corolla tube. These can be found in species such as Narcissus, Passiflora, Hippiastrum, and families such as Asteraceae, Liliaceae, and so on. In these two flowers you can see the floral corona in purple color in Passiflora, and yellow color in Narcissus, pointed by red arrows. The next important part of the flower is the peduncle or petal where the main axis or the stalk of the flower of inflorescence get attached to the stem or the peduncle. Simple flower has one pedicle. But, if that is an inflorescence it has a peduncle with several petals. These peduncles or petals support the flowers. Receptacle is the thickened part of a stem of the petal from which the flower organs grow. It can situate below or encase the reproductive organs of the flower. In Latin, receptaculum describes a place to receive and store things. These support the whole flower by bearing all flower organs and act as the base and protect reproductive organs of the flower. These also keep the flower in an elevated position so as to attract the pollinators. In some accessory fruits, for example the palm and strawberry, the receptacle gives rise the edible part of the fruit. Sepals are the greenish, or sometimes brownish, leaf-like, outermost, whirl around the base of the flower. Collectively, the ring of sepals are called the calyx, in plural, calyces. Calyx is derived from Greek, which means bud, husk, wrapping, cup or goblet. Gamosepalus means united or fused sepals, where polysepalus means free sepals. Sepals protect the flower and bud, and support the petals when in blooming. Sometimes, sepals make an edible part of a fruit. Petals are the modified leaves that surround the reproductive parts of flowers. The collection of all petals in a flower is referred to as the corolla. There are lots of variations and nomenclatures related to this. Let's get to know about them in the upcoming slides. Petals play important functions. Petals attract pollinators by vivid colors, odors and sizes. They also repel insects to reduce damage. Further, these help protecting reproductive parts. Calyx and corolla collectively are called perianth. When they are indistinguishable, we call them tapels. Depending on their arrangement or fusion, we can name them in different ways. Dichlamidius or heterochlamidius means separate calyx and corolla. Homochlamidius means indistinguishable calyx and corolla or tepals. Floral meristem without corolla or calyx is named as achlamidius. Flowers without either the petals or sepals are called monochlamidius. Flowers are also categorized depending on the perianth arrangement or color. Viceriate is referred to as a perianth as in two worlds where a flower with green perianth is called sepaloid flower while petaloid flower has a brightly colored perianth. There are different petal and corolla types too. When flower has a corolla with separate petals, without fusion of individual segments, it is called apipetalous. Polypetalous or caripetalous flowers have petals that are free from one another in the corolla. In gamapetalous or sympetalous flowers, the petals are fused or at least partially fused. Syntipalous flowers have fused tepals and sometimes they form a tube. This slide shows different names given to flowers depending on their shapes. For instance, 
Funnel form flowers have funnel shaped corolla. Cup form has a cup like corolla and so on. This slide also shows some more forms of corolla. Flowers are also categorized based on their corolla arrangement in floral bud which is called estivation. In these figures, just note how the petals are arranged, for example, in valvate form, petals are not overlapped. But in the twisted form, one corner or a side of the petal is covered by the other petal and so on. Flowers are further categorized based on their symmetry. The petal will or corolla may be either radially or bilaterally symmetrical. Actinomorphic or radial symmetry or ray formed means the flower can be dived into two identical halves when divided though center. Petals are essentially identical in size and shape. Examples are i.e. mustard, datura, chili. The nest category is zygomorphic or bilateral symmetry or yolk or pear formed. In this, flower is symmetrical in only one plane or identical in only one plane cut. P. Cassia and bean flowers are good examples for bilateral symmetry. Asymmetric or irregular means none of the planes are identical. Other floral parts may be modified from the regular form, but the petals show the greatest deviation from radial symmetry. Canna flower is an irregular one. Flowers are also identified based on the number of petals. In trimerous flowers, floral appendages such as calyx, corolla, or perianth are present in three or multiples of three. Tetramerous flowers are arranged in similar whorls of four. In pentamerous flowers, floral parts are arranged in clusters of five. So far, we have been discussing on different petal and corolla arrangement. Now let's get to know about male parts of the flower or we call it androecium. In this figure you can see an anther, its cross section showing pollen sacs where pollens are produced and different shapes of pollens. It is interesting that plants can be identified based on pollen characters as well. Scientists use these information to identify which plants have existed in ancient time. In this slide you can see how pollens are produced in pollen sacs and how they are released to the environment. The next figure shows how a pollen is germinated, which is similar to pollen finding its way to the ovary during fertilization. Flowers are also categorized based on their stamen arrangement. Epipetalous flowers have stamens that are attached to petals such as in brinjal. Epiphyllous flowers have stamens attached to perianth. Lily is a good example. In polyandrous flowers, stamens are free while in synandrous flowers, stamens are united. Synandrous flowers are in three types. Monodelphus where stamens are united as a bunch or a bundle, such as in China or rose. Diadelphus flowers with stamens united as two bundles as in pea. In polydelphus flowers, stamens are united as more than two bundles. Citrus is an example. There are variations in stamen lengths too. Let's move on to female part or the gynetium. You can see the structure of carpal that include ovary, stigma and style. Next is the cross section of the ovary showing different tissue arrangements. Flowers that have more than one carpal is termed as polycarpallary pistils or pistils with many carpals. These can be seen as two types. Apocarpus flowers have free carpals. Lotus and rose are good examples. Syncarpus flowers have fused carpals for examples mustard and tomato. Three types of flowers can be found based on the position of the ovary in a flower. In hypogenous flowers, sepals, petals and stamens are attached to the receptacle below the ovary. So ovary is superior. Tomato, tulip, mustard, brinjal and snapdragon good examples. In perigenous flowers, sepals, petals and stamens are fused at the base to form a cup-shaped structure called a hypanthium which is inserted beneath the ovary. So the ovary is superior. Cherry, prunus, plum, rose are examples for such flowers. In epigenous flowers, sepals, petals and stamens arise from the top of the ovary, or from a hypanthium inserted above the ovary. So the ovary is inferior. Daffodil, guava and cucumber are the examples for this. Now let's get to know how the ovules are attached in the ovary. This is called placentation. There are different names given for identification of these types of forms. To determine which they belong, you need to look at the flower in two different sections. This table shows you these placentations in detail. 
Now using both carpal and ovule arrangement we can define these different forms of ovaries and flowers. So far, we have talked a lot about different parts of flowers and their arrangements. Now let's see some different flowers that we need different terminologies when labeling them. For example, in Canna, just look at the staminoid and label them. You'll think staminoid as a petal. This is used as a nectar guide. Look at these two flowers, pictorial and lotus. They look like same. Try to identify their parts now. This is banana. You can see large bracts. In placiflora, note the distinct superior ovary, corona and operculum. In poinsettia or euphorbia, these colorful parts are not petals. Those are modified leaves or bracts. Note the cyathium in florets. For poesia or grass family, there are different terminologies. For the composite flowers such as in family Astracea, there are two floret types called ray florets and disc florets. These figures shows the sunflower. This one is again a composite flower, such as in zinnia. Above we mainly focused on simple flowers and some modifications and identifications. Now let's see inflorescence, an axis that contains bunch of separate florets because they have unique and interesting arrangements. There are two main types. Racemose or indeterminate axis where main axis continue to grow indefinitely and does not terminate with a flower. Samos or determinate axis where the main stops growing and the oldest floret can be found at the end of the axis and opens before others. These can also be found as simple or compound based on the know of axis they have. In this slide, you can see the terminologies used in labeling these inflorescence. Depending on the arrangement of these axis, different names are given. These are for samos type. These are for racemose type inflorescence. For easy identification and understanding of angiosperm evolution, floral diagrams are used and very important. These are graphical representations of flower structure. These shows the number of floral organs, their arrangements and fusions and so on. Different symbols are used to denote different parts as you can see in this slide. These figures show how we can draw these floral diagrams for several species. Different letters are used to denote different parts in the equation. For instance, K for calyx, C for corolla, A for androecium and G for gynecium and so on. Numbers are given to denote the total count of each appendage or floral part. We hope you got a basic knowledge of flower, their arrangement and terminologies. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe us and let us know your opinions.